If you tow or are planning to tow, you really need to watch this video. You see, there's a lot of important information you really need to consider when setting up your tow vehicle if you want to tow heavy loads. That way you'll keep it safe and also legal. When you're adding two and a half to three tonne behind a four wheel drive like this, you're driving a completely different vehicle. The weight changes suspension and steering geometry, wheel alignment, engine capabilities, plus you're now twice as heavy trying to stop with the same brake pads and rotors. Today we're going to go through the top five mods and more importantly, what order you need to do those mods in so you can tow anything from a mid-sized boat right up to a full-size caravan. So let's get into it. The single most important factor when towing is weight. Now, from the weight of your trailer to your tow vehicle, your tow ball weight, your GVM, your axle loads, your tires, your wheels, all of that, plus so much more, is very, very important. You need to set up your vehicle correctly to be able to take the weight as your very first step. There are four terms every single person towing needs to understand and the data they represent. They are GVM. This stands for Gross Vehicle Mass. It's the maximum legal weight your vehicle is allowed to be on the road. You can find your vehicle's GVM on your build plate. GCM. This stands for Gross Combination Mass. It is the maximum legal weight of both your vehicle and whatever your towing is allowed to be. ATM. This means Aggregate Trailer Mass. This is like GVM, but for your trailer. It is the maximum weight your trailer can be on its own, as specified by the manufacturer. Tow Ball Download. This is the download weight your trailer applies to the vehicle's tow ball. It's important because it affects your vehicle's payload. Payload. This is the amount your vehicle can carry without exceeding the GVM. This includes all your accessories, fuel, food, passengers, luggage, and gear including tools and spare parts. It also includes the tow ball weight of your trailer that you're towing. Now, it's really important that we understand these figures and terms, especially in relation to our own tow vehicles, because of course, if we exceed any of these figures, we're driving around illegally. Now, in the event of an accident or something like that, your insurer is not gonna cover you and you will be held liable for negligence as well. As well as that, exceeding these weights puts excess stress on your vehicle's driveline, suspension, body, and chassis, which can also affect your warranty. If you're found to be operating your vehicle outside its recommended load limits. Let's have a look at the standard 200 series with no GVM upgrade. Standard, a 200 series has a GVM of 3.35 tonne with a curb weight of 2.74 tonne, leaving you with a payload of 610 kilos. You'd be amazed at how quickly you can exceed your vehicle's GVM when you start accessorising with all the bits and pieces you need to make a quality tow vehicle. So I've decided I'd list a bunch of accessories of their typical weight so you can see if your vehicle might be going over the limit. Bull bar, 80 to 100 kilos. Roof rack, 30 kilos. Spare tire, 40 kilos. Storage system, 50 to 80 kilos. 12 volt setup, 40 kilos. Tools and spares, 40 kilos. Two passengers at 80 kilos each equals 160 kilos. Fridge and fridge slide, 60 kilos. Water, 20 to 60 kilos. Trailer ball weight for a camper trailer, 150 kilos. Total weight equals 690 kilos. So before you've even fueled up and hit the road, you're almost 100 kilos overweight already. So say you wanted to tow an even bigger van than this one, say three and a half tonne, and you have a standard 200 series. Well, your tow ball download is gonna be 350 kilos. Now you need to take that off your payload. Your payload's 610 kilos, um, therefore you've only got 260 kilos left. Chuck two passengers in, say 80 kilos each, you've only got 100 kilos now, for all your accessories, your tools, your water, your camping gear. You can see how quickly all this adds up. Do yourself a favor and go down to a public way bridge like this one right here. Get your vehicle and your caravan fully loaded and that way you can see the real weight of what you're traveling around with. Weigh your vehicle on its own. Your trailer on its own are both together. This will give your vehicle and trailer's weight relative to their GVM and ATM. And it'll also give you your GCM. From there, you can decide what adjustments you need to make to lose weight if necessary. Right, I, so this is quite interesting. Obviously, I knew what the caravan weighed beforehand and I knew what the vehicle weighed, but it's good to see, um, especially on this way bridge, it can actually split up the weight. So with the caravan actually hooked up to the vehicle, it's added a tow ball weight of 260 kilos onto my vehicle. So if you're worried about your vehicle being overweight, hook a big caravan up, I mean, you know, that's a fair amount of weight that's added to the vehicle's um, GVM. So anyway, all up 
I'm a 6.84 ton. So combination is 6.84 tons. That's quite a heavy load. Have you weighed your vehicle and trailer? Was it overweight and what did you do to fix it? Let us know in the comments below. So if you want to tow anything, what you really need to consider first is what is the total fully loaded weight of your trailer, the fully loaded weight of your tow vehicle, the tow ball download weight, so how much uh, weight is on that tow ball, as well as the total combined weight. Now, all of these things are really easy to figure out and they're going to save you so many less headaches on the road. Okay, so you've weighed your vehicle and you've realised it's really heavy. Well, fortunately, there's some solutions out there to make it safe and, of course, legal. Now, if you're planning to tow anything, you really need to upgrade your suspension, and here's why. Your factory suspension in your vehicle isn't equipped to tow big loads. As we discussed with vehicle weights, loading up a vehicle with standard suspension can make it dangerous to drive and handle poorly. Look at what happens to the D-Max when we load up the back with standard suspension. See how the back of the vehicle goes down and the front goes up? Not only will that put more stress on the vehicle's driveline and chassis, but it'll also make it more difficult and dangerous to drive. That's because when you load a vehicle up like this, it'll cause the front of the vehicle to unload, which means your steering won't be as responsive. And because your vehicle uses the front brakes more than the rear, with less weight over the front axle, it'll also dramatically affect braking performance. But look at what happens when the vehicle is loaded up with the correct rated springs to suit the load that is being carried. See how much more level the vehicle is? That's because the suspension can handle the weight, and it means the vehicle will be able to handle the weight much nicer when you're towing. The trade-off is that heavier duty springs will make the vehicle ride harsher when unladen, but you'll be able to handle the weights and drive much safer when you're towing or carrying a big load. Another option you might have, depending on the type of vehicle you've got, is doing a GVM upgrade when you're also upgrading your suspension. Now, there's a lot of different GVM upgrades out there that'll suit your needs and of course your budget as well. You can get basic, affordable GVM upgrades like this that include heavier duty springs and larger shocks to suit, right through to larger kits that include bracing on the chassis and diff housing, brake upgrades and suspension upgrades. Each kit will have a different certified load rating that it increases your GVM to. So, for example, my 200 series here has a GVM of 4,495 kilos. Fully loaded as it sits right here, it weighs 3,900 kilos. So, I've got about 600 kilos before I reach my GVM. To get the GVM upgrade on my 200, it had the chassis and rear housing braced, and the suspension was also upgraded to heavier duty springs and shocks to suit the weight that I'm carrying, as well as airbags in the rear to help with the load. It's always best to speak to proper suspension experts. The team at Fulcrum have set up the suspension on all my four-wheel drives. We'll be able to get the setup just right for your tow rig. Another accessory that people often add to their vans to help with load levelling is what's called a load distribution hitch. These are attached to your tow bar and use high strength torsional steel bars to help level your tow vehicle and your van when towing by decreasing axle load on the rear and distributing it to the front of the vehicle, therefore levelling the vehicle out. They do not decrease the tow ball download imposed by your van on the vehicle. That remains the same. All they do is distribute the weight better across the vehicle, therefore making it more level and safer. Another big issue you might find, if your suspension is set up incorrectly, as soon as you put the weight on the back of the vehicle, it's going to compress those rear springs and obviously lift the front up at the same time, so your handling is going to be very much compromised. Um, it's going to be very unsafe and be very unloaded in the front, so your steering, um, your braking, the whole vehicle is not going to perform the way it should. Now, a lot of people will try and add a weight distribution hitch which um, really only masks the problem, it doesn't fix the problem at its cause, and especially if you're overweighted as well, because you're going to have all that extra weight down on the tow ball, um, the weight distribution hitch is not going to fix that, and if you're overloaded, you're still going to remain overloaded even with a weight distribution hitch. Another thing to consider with a load distribution hitch, that it basically uses torsional steel to level out the vehicle and the hitch that is under a huge amount of strain when set up. If you then go and drive your vehicle through a washout or a drain and change the angle of the hitch relative to the vehicle, you can go and put excessive amounts of extra force onto your load leveling hitch system, which can cause it to fail unless you disconnect the hitch before the washout. When set up right, they can work particularly well, especially on long highway trips, but ensure that you get the right suspension in your vehicle for towing in the first place.
The next thing you need to address, of course, is your brakes. Now, your factory brakes are really only designed to pull the vehicle up in a standard sort of form. Add a couple of tons of caravan on the back and there's no way those brakes will work effectively. Just check out how much faster my fully loaded 200 will pull up with the Red Arc Tow Pro installed compared to without it. I was able to pull up 10.8 metres sooner with my electric trailer brakes operating compared to without them. Well, I seriously didn't think that was going to be the case. Of course I knew that the vehicle was going to stop a lot better with the electric brakes, but I didn't realise by how much. Now, keep in mind, I was only doing 40 k's an hour. The stopping distance between electric brakes and no electric brakes is 10.8 metres. That's absolutely massive. Now, I'm only doing 40 k's an hour. I've also got an upgraded um, aftermarket brake kit through the 200 series, so it does stop better than an average one, and it's still quite a huge distance. And another thing that was really obvious when I was driving and doing this test was that without the electric brakes, I felt the caravan really pushing hard against the back of the 200 series. Keep in mind that 200 series is about four ton as well. So it's a nice heavy tow vehicle, but still just at 40 k's an hour, I felt really unstable and unhinged as I came in on the brakes there. ABS was flickering and um, I just couldn't pull up. It was just like a big sled with a heap of momentum. And it took me, you know, 10.8 meters to pull up over what I did with uh, the electric brakes on. So imagine you're doing 60 or even 80 k's an hour with a caravan the stopping distance would be absolutely massive you know that's why you absolutely need a good quality set of electric brakes the first step is to add an electronic brake controller in fact if you're towing over two tons you legally need to have an electronic brake controller installed i use a red arc tow pro elite on all my vehicles because it's easy to control and it installs nice and neat with only this knob to control your braking it also has two modes for your setup proportional and user-controlled braking. Proportional activates the trailer brakes in proportion to your vehicle's braking level. This is perfect on the highway or around town as a unit will do it all for you. Whereas with manual braking, I can adjust this dial to suit how much braking I need. The more you turn it up, the more your brakes on your trailer will be applied. One of the benefits about having a uh, brake control with a manual function is, especially on steep descent, say off-road, you can manually dial in how much brake you want it to be applied to the trailer. So when I'm going down something really steep, I might put it up to 8, 9 or even 10, the maximum setting, so the max amount of brakes is actually applied to the trailer and the vehicle is not doing all the work. Another thing you can do, of course, is upgrade the brakes on your tow vehicle and your trailer as well. On my 200 series here, I've actually upgraded the pads, the rotors, and also the brake lines to braided lines. Now, that's really helped the vehicle pulling up because, yeah, as you can understand, this vehicle weighs a lot more than a factory 200. Another thing that's often overlooked, but is essential for towing big loads, of course, is your wheels and tyres. Commonly, we'll just choose wheels based on looks and tyres based on off-road performance. But if you're planning to carry some weight, you also need to factor in the load rating of your wheels and tyres so they can handle the extra weight too. So when it comes to choosing a set of wheels for your pride and joy, don't just choose something that's aesthetically pleasing, that looks good. You want to choose something that has a high load rating. Now typically with a big GVM on a vehicle like this, you're looking for a load rating of around 1500 kilos per wheel. Same with the tyres I choose. I went for Goodyear Wrangler Duratrax because they got a maximum load rating of 1750 kilos. Times that by four and you got 7,000 kilos, which allows for a full load, a heavy trailer in tow, and some room for when extra load is applied to the tyres, like hitting a washout. Now, when I was accessorising this 200 series, I had towing in mind. I really wanted to make this the ultimate tow vehicle. That's why I went with the Goodyear Duratrax. Now, I find they're a perfect all-rounder. I didn't want a big mud tyre on this vehicle because I probably wasn't going to use it in that sort of terrain. I find the Duratrax have an aggressive sidewall, so if I do find myself off-road in a bit of mud or in a big rut, I've got enough traction to get out. But on the road, especially when I'm towing either a caravan or a boat, I find this is a good combination, the best of both worlds. They work off-road, but they're also really well-mannered on-road as well and perfect for towing. Here's how to check the load rating of your tyre. On the side, you'll have a number like this, followed by the letter. The number is a load rating and the letter is a category for the speed rating. These tyres have a rating of Q, which means they rate up to 160 k's an hour. Some tyres will have a load rating directly on it like this too. So here's another little tip to help you get the right tyre pressures when you're towing. Now, on the highway, I typically run about 40 in the front and 45 in the rear. Keeping in mind, this is a very heavy vehicle. When I hit the sand on maybe a soft beach, I'm straight away down to at least 18 psi until those tyres are really bagged out. And on a dirt road just like this, the compromise is probably about 
26 to 28, you just want to cut a little bit of air out of those tyres so they bag out a little bit and your ride is much more enjoyable and it's better for the tyre. Also, if you head off road, make sure you air the tyres down on your vehicle and your trailer. Particularly on the beach, this will allow the trailer to follow your vehicle's wheel tracks. Stay on top of soft surfaces like sand instead of digging in and when you stop, it'll also create less of a hump in the front of the tyre, which means it requires less effort to take off. You always want to coast to a stop on soft sand instead of slamming your brakes on so you don't dig a hole. Next up, you've got to be able to see what you're actually towing. In fact, if you're towing a really big van, it can even be a legal requirement to fit aftermarket mirrors to your tow vehicle. There are a few main types. The first are these bolt-on tow mirrors. They may serve a purpose for your occasional trips, but they can move around a lot, and some can even damage your door or your mirror if they come loose and rub. If you're towing a lot, these strap-on mirrors just aren't up to scratch. You need to invest in a proper set. The other benefit is they give you much more vision around your canopy when you're not towing. I reckon the best solution has to be to fit a set of aftermarket mirrors like these ones from Clearview. Now, they're not exactly a budget option, but what's so good about them is you can see exactly what you're towing, which makes for a much safer experience on the road. Now, when you're driving around town, of course, they stick in nice and flush to the vehicle. You put a van on the back, you can just pull these straight out like this, and it gives you so much more vision. Another worthwhile addition to your vehicle, um, if your vehicle doesn't come standard one of these, is a reverse camera. Obviously a reverse camera um, makes it very helpful when you're trying to reverse up and attach a trailer, but it's also a really cool safety feature as well, especially if you've got kids or something like that who might be running around while you're trying to reverse. I reckon it's a must-have thing. Another accessory I reckon that's super important for just about every single four-wheel driver out there, but more important for people who do a fair bit of towing, is good quality communications. Now, of course, I'm talking about a good quality UHF like this one here. I've got an XRS Connect from GME. I reckon it's a great little unit to keep in your four-wheel drive. It's an in-cab five-watt unit. Um, I've matched this up to a 6.6 .6 dB aerial, which I reckon is the best of uh, both worlds. So if you're doing a fair bit of mountainous uh, work, as well as um, the big open roads you're gonna find in the outback, 6.6 .6 will cover you for just about everything. Now, obviously a UHF is super important for keeping in communications with the rest of your convoy, but I also see it as a bit of a safety feature, especially when you're out in the outback, you're coming up to a road train or um, you know road conditions might not be that good. You can warn other travelers, they can warn you. Keeping in good communication is gonna be the best safety device you have especially when you're out on the open road. This is particularly important when you're, say, on a dusty road and you're towing, and you come up to a road train. Because you're towing, it's gonna to take a lot longer to overtake, which increases the risk. But with a UHF installed, you can simply send a transmission to the truckie, and he can tell you if the road is clear ahead and wash off a bit of speed to let you pass safely. Well, there you have it guys. Hopefully you got a stack out of this video, in particular, how to set your four wheel drive up to be the ultimate tow vehicle. Now, in my opinion, it doesn't matter what make or model vehicle that you've got, every single four-wheel drive out there can benefit hugely from a couple of key aftermarket accessories. Now, we went through the top five, and I reckon they're absolute essentials. If you really plan on maybe doing a lap around Australia, towing a big caravan, a boat, a camper trailer, something with a fair bit of weight behind you. Before I go, I just wanna leave you with one last towing tip, in that your tow vehicle also needs to be heavier than the weight that you're dragging behind you. So that's one of my best tow tips, in fact, and it's an old one, but I still reckon it rings really true today. So what I wanna ask you guys, though, is for your best towing tip. Leave it in the comments below. I can't wait to, to hear what you guys have come up with. Chances are you guys tow a lot of heavy loads right around the country with camper trailers, caravans, boats. Let us know your best towing tip. Anyway, that's enough from me. I can't wait to see you next time at 4 Drive 24-7.